and welcome back. I thought I'd talk about the Siena and the climate control in the situation of being a snowbird in the southwest. So I'm here at Lake Havasu and had some thoughts on using the climate control in this type of environment. So here's the Siena. Not much has changed with how I do things or what I've done to it. Another beautiful day here. Temperatures in the 60s, sometimes up to 70, with nights kind of in the 40s. So that is what I wanted to talk about when it comes to using climate control or not in this type of weather. So to answer the question quickly, how much do I use the climate control in this type of situation? The answer is not very much. Uh, so that's it, you can stop watching now. No, so let's describe the situation. We've got daytime temperatures, uh, like I said, in the 60s, maybe 70, and the lows down into the 40s, but the humidity is low. So dry weather, very different from when I was in Florida, obviously. So really the only time I'm firing up the climate control is at night and for heat. Now everybody's different. If you have temperatures in the 40s, you might think, ah, that's not that cold. I'll just dress up warmly or use a warm sleeping bag or a blanket, etc." which I do. And lately what I've been doing is just falling asleep with the van off and, you know, bundling up a little bit. And then if I have to get up to, you know, do a number one in the middle of the night and it's maybe 3 a.m. or whatever, sometimes I will then turn on the van and get a little heat going for that part of the night, which is the coldest part of the night, the early morning until sunrise. So, you know, maybe I'm using the climate control for two, three, maybe four hours. And another thing that comes in handy is of course charging devices. Now you could have a supplemental battery set up, solar, etc. cetera, um, but I don't, I'm trying to keep things simple. So I will often, you know, turn on the van for climate control and then make sure everything's plugged in and charging. So if you were to do the snowbird thing and uh, in the Southwest, especially in the winters, and then up into the mountains during the, the heat of the summer, where again, the humidity is low. Do you need a Sienna and the climate control that it allows? And I guess I would, I would say no, not really. I mean, you can get around not using the climate control when you're out west and probably be okay. Now there is the issue of heat. Sorry, I forgot to talk about this. Yes, the issue of heat. So if you don't wanna just simply bundle up and you want a source of heat, uh, you know, they make lots of little portable solutions for that. Um, but everything costs money. You know, you're gonna be burning some kind of fuel to make heat. In my case, I just keep it simple and use the Sienna's engine and climate control system to make heat when I need it. Is it the most efficient? Eh, probably not, but again, keeping it simple. Also in my personal case, I'm heading back to the Midwest fairly frequently, sometimes the East Coast, where yes, it is humid. And if I wanna visit Florida, same deal. And to me, I like being able to use the climate control when it's very humid out. Uh, but that's just me. Everybody's different when it comes to that and they're sleeping um, what's comfortable for them. So to revisit the cost of running the climate control, it's about a tenth of a gallon per hour, I find, um, and a cost maybe 40 cents per hour, depending on gas prices. You could even raise that to 50 cents an hour and really it's still worth it, I think. Um, and again, out here, my typical use has been only for a few hours in the early morning um, as needed. And there have been times I've spent the night dressed warmly and not even turned on the van at all. So really it's just down to personal preference. And of course, another feature of this vehicle is the good gas mileage. If you're willing to put up with a smaller space compared to, you know, a Sprinter or a Ford Transit, Dodge Promaster, etc. So as I've talked about in previous videos, you know, it's just down to what your needs are and uh, what you're looking to do. You know, if you want to do a lot of backcountry and you need high ground clearance or four wheel drive, uh, you've got that to consider. Um, or if you want to skip the climate control entirely and go for more space, you can do that. Um, but in my case, because I'm crisscrossing the country so much, visiting people and checking out new areas, I do appreciate the good gas mileage, and like I say, when I'm in humid situations, or especially hot and humid situations, the climate control for sleeping at night is a game changer for me.
all right so thanks for checking out these thoughts and we'll see you down the road